Good morning. This is Dr. Knotts again, and today we're going to discuss simple to complex disassociation. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I do pray and ask that you'd speak through me, that you'd teach truth, that you'd bless all those who watch this video. In Christ Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. I left off in the last video um, speaking about a person, a lady who had fragments and was unable to do laundry that that would be the triggering. And um, I've been asked why it was a fragment if she had actually been fully molested. The reason it was a fragment is that the father only did the act once. He had came up the stairs and um, molested her and raped her. Uh, he didn't rape her with his penis, he raped her with a pencil. But it caused her to bleed and I guess he became angry I don't guess, he became angry because of the, the blood and such. And um, he made her wash the sheets, tear them off the bed and wash them. He was disgusted. And, and as a result, the triggering elements were putting sheets into a, uh, a washing machine. She was unable to do anything, uh, wash anything that looked like sheets or that looked like linen. And um, because it would trigger her, and cause her to re-experience those traumatic feelings and emotions that were trapped within the modulating centers. Um, she would have to take a sh she she took a, a shower after it had happened to wash all the blood off, and um, it was only after she would sit in the shower for some time that she would be able to exit. In order for a personality to develop. Something either has to happen over an extended period of time, which means more than 10 or 15 minutes. It needs to be a drawn out, long, duressful situation. <clears throat> but it needs to happen more than once. A simple disassociate is someone who has experienced something traumatic and it has caused them to disassociate and develop a full or partial personality. Now a simple disassociate in my classification is somebody that has less than four or five personalities. Now the reason why I put the limit on four to five is because um, five with men, four with women, is because of the way the brain houses them. The brain will stage and house personalities in various parts. For instance, those that receive a great amount of trauma and pain, long drawn out to rest, for a female will be stored on the right side of the brain. Um, they will be stored at the base of the intellect. And remember, a, a disassociative uh, part whether it be a fragment or whether it be a simple personality will be a combination to a varying degree of the individual's intellect, their will, their emotion, their mind, their intelligence, their body, and their memories. Now let me explain that. When a personality is being formed, it will have a varying degree of intellect. In other words, it may not be able to communicate, but it may be able to think and reason to a small degree. I have met many personalities that had no mouth, that had no nose, uh, that were unable to speak, but yet they had an intellect that was highly developed and could speak telepathically. And within the disassociative world, that's very common. They will have a varying degree of will. And the will is, is the ability to exert your own influence, make your own decisions, and seek to carry those out. Let me explain. A person that has been highly abused and develops a personality that is used for being molested and raped can have absolutely no will. The only will it does is it gives in. Or it can have a full-blown personality, as in the case of a complex disassociate or a highly or high level disassociate that let's say is a dominatrix that is actually over other personalities 
and it forces them to do things. It can have a highly developed will with a great amount of, of ability and authority that it exerts over other personalities. It will have a varying degree of emotion. Some are unable to feel. I have met um, hundreds of women that I've worked with that are unable to feel vaginally. Uh, they are unable to feel sex, but yet their alternate personality is off the charts with feelings. And that's because it was all given to that part. I have met men who are unable to cry, unable to feel. Their alternate personality, their role was one in which emotions would be a weakness, uh, would not be something that is needed, and would actually be a negative deficit for that personality. So they are emotionless. I have uh, seen that play out in varying degrees with almost everybody that has an alternate personality. They will have a varying degree of either very little emotion or too much emotion. That is one of the reasons why disassociates are commonly diagnosed, misdiagnosed as being bipolar because they go from one emotional extreme to the other. And though it may exhibit itself and be classified as bipolarism, in effect, that is not the problem. The problem is, is disassociative continuum states. They'll have an altar that has no emotion. They'll have one that is completely broken down, sad, withdrawn. They'll have another that is euphoric, completely happy and on top of the world. This imbalance has been created because the emotions have been split between the varying altars. All right, a developing personality will have its own aspect of the mind. Now, this can make things complicated if you don't understand it. Try to keep this simple. For instance, in lab labyrinth programming, it's very common for there to be beast human alters, alternate personalities within the individual. Very commonly, the beast will have like the head of a minotaur, the body of a man, the head of a cat, the body of a female. These aspects of the mind will be totally beast. They will not be human. So they will have varying degrees within the same person of the mind. One may completely believe it's an animal. One may believe it's a human. Um, the mind will be subjected to where it believes that its father or its owner or its programmer is God. And as a result, they will completely submit to his will. He'll impress or implant within them an image of himself. And he will implant his own desires and will with that self. It will take on a full-blown personality. In all high-level programming, the owner or the programmer will put himself within the person so it's a self-regulating system to where within that person's base intellect at the fifth level, the owner will be there and he will control all the other altars and systems and he will be God. There will be a varying degree of intelligence. Now, intelligence is different than intellect. Intelligence is the ability to process stimuli and to understand it. The intelligence will often be skewed. This is where schemata comes in. A schema is a word picture association with definitive value of what a person believes to be true. For instance, this is a kangaroo mug with coffee in it. Now, if I was programming somebody or somebody was programmed and I wanted to use them for, so, for a different purpose, I could say to the alternate personality that's forming and being molded by me that this is not a coffee cup, this is a vase. And it's not holding coffee, it's holding poison. So you have to be careful when you handle it because it's a vase and it's very fragile. Even though it's made out of plastic, in their mind they're thinking it's now fragile. In their mind they're thinking it's poison so you could never drink it and be toxic. And to, to, depending upon the degree or the level of programming I placed in them, I could program their mind 
somatically induce this suggestive thought series into a program, a full-fledged program, to where if they were to drink that or be forced to drink that, they would take on all the effects and body memories of being poisoned and could literally die. I'll go into that on another series. So varying degrees of intelligence. The intelligence includes the schema. Um, when you have a alternate personality that believes it's a cat, dog, a wolf, a lion, a horse, in bestiality programming, the person will have a horse personality. It will not only believe it's a horse, it will have the intellect of a horse with the intelligence of a horse. It will be a horse that's in heat and always looking for sex with other horses. Its body will have body memories that are associated with that. I'll get to that in just a moment. Its intelligence will only be that it knows it needs to be around other horses, it likes to be petted, and it needs to have its hunger for sex satiated for procreation. There will also be varying combinations, that's intelligence, of the body, varying degrees of the body. Let me explain. There are alternate personalities that are called synthetics. Synthetic is not a human body. It's a synthetic body. It's like a cyborg or an imitation life form like an alien. It does not have a body like we do. In um, Joseph Mengele, in some of the programming he did, like with the children in the base where the war camp would be, if you open up their uniforms, they have nothing but bones. They've been starved to death. And so they have a body like that. The body will have a varying degree. Now this also includes aspects of schema which means how they visualize themselves. And it can take on extreme degrees to no degree. Some are just spirit, where they have no body at all. They're just a thought or an invisible person that's a presence there. Um, you can even program those presences or condition them to where they believe that they are a psychic force, like a wraith or a spirit demonic spirit when they're not. It's just a person that has incredibly developed psychic abilities. But that part believes it is uh, nothing more than a spirit or spiritual presence. Okay, the seventh one is memories. Uh, memories play a very great, important part in each developing personality. The reason is, is body memories, neural programming, neurolinguistic programming is when you associate words with the memories of the body. But neural programming are body memories. They're memories that are stored within the base of the brain, but they're also stored within what we call the signature imprint of the dendrite. They are also stored within the actual molecular agent, the synthetic or we call this the com composure of the body itself the muscles the nerves the endings a person can be cued and I've seen this happen many times uh, prior to becoming a Christian for instance where they need to have sex with a bull a female and simply by being cued um, their female genitalia can just open right up and just stay open so that it's able to receive the bull without being destroyed, without them being torn apart. Body memories can be replicated. Um, a person can re-experience everything simply by a body memory. Uh, for instance, breaking a leg or having a joint taken out and then put back in. It's incredibly painful and if triggered or cued all of those memories can come right back. So memories include not only the body, but also the mind. The mind is the aspect of the controlling agent, which is over both the body, the spirit, and the soul. Now, that brings me to your $5 word for today, trichotomy. Some people believe in a dichotomous makeup, which means a person is just body and soul. I hold specifically to a trichotomy, Trichotomous makeup means you have a body, a spirit, and a soul. The spirit is the part of a person that the Holy Spirit will link himself to. 
It is also the part of the person that a demonic spirit will link themselves to. Now, the soul is the part of you, is the volitional element of the mind, the intellect, the will, the reason, with emotional influence that makes decisions. It's the volitional element of the brain. And then the body, that's the housing unit. That's that which is carrying the soul and the spirit. It is the vehicle, it is the storage point for the mind, or we'd say the will, the spirit, and then the soul. So, memories can be a body memory, it can be a memory of the mind, and there are seven parts of varying degrees that each developing personality will have. Once again, it's the intellect, they will have will, emotion, mind, intelligence, body, and memories. Those are the seven components that will make up a developing personality. This is the separation point between fragmentation and simple disassociation is that a simple disassociate or a personality will have a combination of these seven aspects. A fragment will not. A fragment will be primarily an emotional containment, a very small portion of will, and the will that it has is one state of helplessness and hopelessness. It will have some aspect of body and body memories, but it will not have a full development of compo components of intelligence. It will not have mind. It will not have intellect. It may have a small percentage, but it most likely will usually not have any intellect. So, that's what defines a personality that has been developed. This associate identity disorder was formerly known as multiple personality disorder or MPD. Now, the reason why it was redefined is because they say that it is not multiple persons with disorders or multiple personalities. It is a single personality that has been split and divided. That is true when dealing with a single-souled individual. But when you are dealing with a dualist soul or a chimera, that is not true. Now, a dual-souled individual is when you have gametization, or let's say one embryo devours the other one in the womb. And as a result, you have a twin. I have done a great deal of research, was trained a great deal on this also, and for instance, um, there was a, a war veteran during Vietnam who when he went to sleep, his body would wake up and he was unable to talk, didn't know how to shoot a gun, but it would swing it like a club. And it saved the entire uh, platoon by going out and, and stopping an ambush. They were going to be marching forward and um, it beat to death five different uh, Vietnamese soldiers. It beat them to bloody pulps. The person had no memory of it when they found him the next day. He was sleeping against a tree, but he was saturated in blood. Well, it was found later on, uh, when he had to have MRIs do, uh, that he had a secondary aspect brain, a small brain from a twin. You can have a twin that lives within the genitalia. You can have a twin that lives within the gastrointestinal, various part of the organs or body members. Um, there have been many, many individuals now that have dual DNAs, and that's because they are their, literally their own twin. When you have somebody that has their own twin within them, they will have two souls in them. You can have up to four, one for each quadrant of the brain. In designed intellect, they do just that. The original Project Artichoke monarch would have four souls, four embryos. They would stage them to have them devour one another. The strongest one would be the main person that survived, but they would have them devour each other at specific points in time. They would begin a petri dish with two embryos, and then they would combine the one, the one, and then the, the two. 
a portion of the brain. It's called quasi camerility or four part camerility. Instead of being single camerility or a single person or bicameral, as in the case of dual souls, you can have four. And then those can each be split into a 16 point paradigm. Now, in this case, multiple personalities or multiple personality disorder would be correct def definition. Um, because the psychological aspects of the certain groups did not want this to be known because they didn't want counselors or therapists to be able to truly bring a person to complete healing by getting rid of the extra soul because biblically speaking you do not need two souls in one body and God, the Lord Jesus Christ, can take out the one that died should have died in the womb but continued to live into the other person. Um, hermetic magic if you're familiar with the greater, the lesser grimoires, the Mohian on Maccabea, the Book of Moses magic, uh, which is Egyptian magic, <clears throat> they go into sealing that soul into that body. And I have prayed in high level complex associates, designed intellects, and had the Lord re remove the extra soul from the body, which is what you have to do. Because God will give them their own body in heaven and he will give them a complete body and he will give them the peace and the joy that they need. This has been uh, the second part in the series I'm doing on disassociation. The first was fragmentation. This is on simple disassociation and it's a very, I guess you could call it, it was a deep uh, lecture, but it's the stepping stone and the trademark that you need to understand of what it is that makes a personality. It separates a fragment from a personality. Okay, Lord bless you.